Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Vineyard Church. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Vineyard Church. Good morning, Vito Church. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How about a virtual hug? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. Let's stand. You at home, we're going to do a few songs, worship this morning. And all the saints and angels, they all bow before your throne. No, the elders cast their crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. All the saints and angels, no, the saints and angels, they all bow. And all the elders cast the crowns before the Lamb of God and sing. You are worthy of it all. You are worthy of it all. For from you are all things to you are all things you deserve the glory and you are worthy of it all you are worthy of it all from you are all things to you are all things the glory verse chords no the saints and angels and all the saints and angels they all bow before your throne and all the elders cast the crowns before the Lamb of God and sing You are worthy of it all, Lord, and you are worthy of it all. But from you are all things, and to you are all things, you deserve the glory.
Night and day let incense arise Day and night Night and day let incense arise Day and night Night and day let incense arise Day and night Night and day let incense arise Day and night Night and day let incense arise Day and night Night and day Lord, we just welcome you here this morning, and uh, we all together as your people, we say we're thankful, we're grateful for your mercy to us. Lord, I just pray, and just together with my brothers and sisters here, Lord, we just ask, Lord, for the things that might haunt us from things we've said, things that we've done, actions that we regret. Lord, we lay them before you because, Lord, your word is clear. If, you, if we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just. And you will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness, Lord. So as your people gathered this morning, Lord, we confess we're sinners, Lord. But, Lord, we confess even more that your grace and your mercy is greater than our sin and our mistakes and our faults. So we bless you, Lord, and thank you that we can worship you. Come dwell among us, Lord. Amen. So I would just like to say that I'm so thankful to have my good friend John Haggerty playing bass with me today. And my good friend Mark Larry right over here. <clears throat> you guys want to learn a new song? Okay, let's learn a new song. This song, uh, there she is. Here she comes. <laughs> This is a song Gail fell in love with, and she said, she said, she sent me a text from work. She had been listening to the song, and she said, Greg, this song is right in your wheelhouse. So, <laughs> so I, I learned it because she loves this song, and I really love it now, too. I searched the world. It couldn't fill me Man's empty praise 
and treasures that fade never enough. Then you came along. You put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Chorus. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Sing that again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. And I'm not afraid. To show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. The God of the mountain, God of the mountain, it's the God of the valley. And there's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Let's go back to verse 3. And I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all. You still call me friend. Because the God of the mountains is the God of the valley. and grace and find me again oh there's nothing better than you oh there's nothing Lord better than you oh there's nothing nothing is better than you to dancing you give beauty for ashes you turn shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn mourning to dancing you turn beauty for ashes into armies you turn seas into highways you're the only one who can you're the only you're the only one who can nothing well there's nothing better than you nothing better than you 
Lord, we just say that we need your presence. Lord, in your presence is healing. In your presence is mercy. Lord, we thank you that we didn't have to pursue you, that you pursued us. You pursue all the people around us. That's what you do. And we are calling again. And I hear your voice upon the wind In the quiet, in the still Heaven Glory written in the skies and in the turning of the seas the cause of your majesty heaven let's sing that again you are calling me again and you are calling me again I hear your voice upon the wind and in the quiet in the still Lord heaven glory written glory written in the sky and in the turning of the seas and echoes of your majesty oh lord heaven all that you have done and all that you have done the promise that there's more to come and all I am cries out for more of you for more of you Just 
to be with you. Your glory is all around me. Oh, to be with you. Love to be with you. Oh, There's a stirring in my soul And a fire here within Deep is calling deep again Heaven Sing that again, there's a stirring Sing out church there's a stirring in my soul And a fire here within Deep is calling deep again Heaven All that you have done That you have done the promise that there's more to come. And all I am cries out for more of you, for more of you. glory. Heaven come, 
and fill this place. Glory to glory, and grace to grace. And here and now, let your kingdom come. Our God eternal, now and By nature I have fallen By grace I've been raised Calling me I'm coming home You're calling me I'm coming home Beautifully made, beautifully made by nature. I'm fallen by grace. I've been raised. You're calling me, I am coming home. Calling me, I'm coming home And there are no longer strangers to your arms We are no longer strangers to your arms By your grace you have saved us We're no longer strangers We're no longer strangers to Exiled, once exiled by sin, separated by my transgressions, now welcomed in, calling me.
Your love is reaching me out, running to your arms. Father, I'm coming. Father, I'm coming home. Though I have wandered far, your love is reaching out. I'm running to your arms. I'm running to your arms. I'm coming home. Coming home. Coming. just thank you for your grace to us. Lord, as we continue on this morning, we just ask for your mercy and your grace and your blessing over us, Lord. Thank you for your presence here. Amen. Greetings to all, those that are here, those that are. Greetings to all, those that are here, those that are online viewing. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Robin Grody, and I'm a member of the Kingston family here at the Vineyard. And I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. Um, first is I have the glory of God on the South Shore. And I have three W's. So please grab a pen and the arm of the person next to you. You ready? All right. When? August 30th, 6 p.m. Where? Christ Community Church, 41 Stephen Street, East Taunton. And with, I bet you weren't ready for that W, with a mask a mind for social distancing, and an expectant heart. Second announcement. Many of you had received the email from Karen and John Hernandez, uh, I believe it was August 15th, reminding us to save the date. Saturday, September 26th, we'll be joining thousands of people 
that are going to be gathering in Washington, D.C. and to repent and pray for our God to return. This is a national day of prayer and repentance that is being simulcasted all over the world. A lot of con uh, countries and continents, and I've lost track of um, how many there were, but there's a lot. And we will be viewing that simulcast here at the Vineyard, and we're going to be doing that from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. So come for an hour, come for the whole time frame. Come with a mask if you're coming here. Um, number three, some of you may want to take part in the 10 days of repentance or 10 days of awe. And this is going to be beginning Friday, September 18th for Rosh Hashanah and ends September 28th, Yom Kippur. And we'll be doing a Zoom and live prayer through these 10 days of all. More information will be coming on that. Number four, Seth is on assignment. Um, so he is on vacation. And we will be hearing from Doug Wicks. We'll be sharing the message today. And Joe Giamo will be sharing next week, both of which we're looking forward to hearing. And lastly, I just wanted to share, uh, Don continues to heal. And um, he's waiting for further instruction and direction. Hopefully you've had a chance to read Don's note that he sent out on email last week. It was encouraging both on his healing progress as well as God's spirit reminding Don, trust me. Kathy and I were reading a, a Elijah List email um, yesterday and something really tugged at me and I just wanted to share uh, this with you. God is adjusting and aligning the spinal cord of his body in this hour. He is the chiropractor who is correcting and aligning what has been misaligned in the joints of his body. Praise God and thank you, Holy Spirit. Let's position ourselves with open heart and ears for the message today. Thank you. Good morning. That was pretty quiet. <clears throat> and you need to be louder because the only reason you need to be louder is because a lot of people watching are not in this room. So I'm going to say good morning again. And so these little microphones can pick you guys up. And the people who are, I have a friend in Poland who watches on occasion. Now, her English is impeccable. I don't know how they, she pulled that one off. So, Magdalena, if you're watching, hi. Say hi to Magdalena. Hi, Magdalena. Hi, Magdalena. Yeah, okay, yeah, now I'm going to make sure she watches. <laughs> you know so, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice, nice, nice. Anyway, it's good to be back. Usually, I do this twice a year, maybe, something like that, but I did this last month. So I figured I'd just do the same thing again. It's going to save a lot of time. That's it. You know, what, what the heck. But uh, no, so Seth is up uh, in a boat, I think, doing something in New Hampshire. I hope he's resting and relaxing. He owes me coffee, and so uh, he can come back and buy my coffee. Anyway, uh, it is interesting when I get a chance to, to get back up here, and I've never done them this close back to back. I usually have a lot of warning and... <laughs> I have a lot to say, so I told Chris when it gets to be 3 o'clock to give me some sort of sign, all right, so, <clears throat> so we won't go past 3 o'clock. <laughs> but, you know, for those of you who don't know, now everyone in this room knows me, probably, you know, the odds are good. Uh, I am, so for, these are, for the folks out in video land, out in computer land, uh, my name is Doug Wicks. I'm not a pastor, I'm a videographer. I work for a video production company in Boston, and I, I make a living by you know, lugging cameras around the world and taking pictures of this and that, and then bringing all the footage back and editing it together, and some of it gets to be on uh, broadcast television, and some of it doesn't. And so I used to work in Washington, D.C., just a real quick story. There's always a lot of quick stories. You know, but I used to work in Washington, D.C. for a company that used to edit for America's Most Wanted. And so I was, so, this is like 30 years ago, I was always so excited when these, we used to call them AMW. You think it's a root beer thing, but we, it was America's Most Wanted for us. So when these producers would come in and we cut together their little sequence, uh, and you know, we spend 16 hours cutting together four minutes for broadcast, which is kind of normal 
and it drives you nuts. But um, I was just excited that at the end of the show, you'd see my name grow up. You know, editors, me and, and you know, these editors around town in, in DC. It's like Doug Wicks. I thought, oh, I gotta call mom, you know? Mom needs to see my name on a, on a credit scroll at the end of a show. And I would call her up, and sure enough, if the folks didn't squeeze the credit roll back into the corner so you could see some sort of commercial, and so was, my name was like, teeny tiny sorts of deals, but it was a sad moment in my life. <laughs> I've recovered, but that's the kind of stuff I do. I shoot stuff, I edit stuff. Uh, and I've also had the privilege of leading a men's Bible study for over 20 years. So, it, you know, I don't, a lot of you folks know that too, but that's also for the benefit of the folks out in Never Neverland watching this to say, why the heck do they have a camera guy talking about God? So now they know, okay. And this men's group is, is, is like life and death for me. You know, I just, for, for in my life, I, I live in this triangle, okay? And I think I've talked about my triangle before. And... My triangle is time in God's word, time alone in prayer, and time hanging out with like-minded thinking Christians. And that men's group on Saturday is my time with like-minded thinking Christians because it's a pretty rowdy group. And we, one time, when John Brenton was still with us, Barbara, I mean, I <laughs> love that man, still do, and it's... He said one time, he goes, Doug, why don't you just have the people introduce themselves and go around the room and, and see where they're from? Because you know, we meet in a uh, congregational church in Hanson. And we went around the room, and we all kind of know each other, we, more so now than then. And there were like 14 churches represented in this circle. I mean, we're meeting in a congregational church, but there's only two or three guys from that. We went there from a Baptist church. There's only two or three guys from there. I don't know where they come from. They just kind of show up and drink coffee and shoot the breeze with us. I like that. That, to me, is vital. It's, it's an hour of iron sharpening iron. We don't all agree. I mean, that's life, okay? But we sharpen each other up. And that, that corner of my triangle is so important. I know God's word's important. I think everybody in this room knows that the book is important and we need to spend time in it. Prayer, alone. We talked about this the other day. Like, Jesus says, find a closet. Go in the closet. Oh, closet. Yeah, right, sure. I'm going to hang out in the closet, right. You know, not my closet. Okay. But he's trying to say, get alone. Get alone to pray. Get alone to worship him. Get alone to spend one-on-one -on -one quality time with the Father. I tell you, vital. Vital. And if I don't do that, I don't care where they send me. You know, they have sent me everywhere. I was in the streets of Cairo, Egypt, about a year ago, okay, walking the streets of Cairo, worshiping the Father, and just praying. They don't know what I'm saying. I'm speaking English. They speak Arabic. Who cares? You know, but, but it's like, it doesn't matter where you are, what you're doing. And this, this is just, this is me now. For me, I have to set that time aside to seek the Father, to seek him. I have learned, someday I'll get to my message. I have learned that prayer is the foundation for everything, all of it. And when I give prayer a back seat, I think there are just consequences for that in my life. And I have suffered enough consequences from my stupidity, but not, no, not now, not now. Prayer has become vital to me, that one-on-one -on -one time. I was joking with the guys yesterday. It's like, I can't do it at home. I can't do this at the house. Now, I'm not a, you know, bow your head, on your knee, I'm not that guy. I'm not that silent prayer thing. I'm not throwing stones at anybody who does. But for me, I need to speak out loud like I'm talking to you guys. That's how I communicate with God. And I'll sing to him out loud. 
you know, and just spend that time together. But you know, I can't do that at the house because things fall down, like my water bottle, you know, and then I have to pick it up. But that's very close to true, though. I'll walk around the house and go, oh, that water bottle should be in the kitchen. Oh, no, why are, why are these here? And I'm cleaning the house while worshiping the Lord. Give me a break. So instead of giving God 100% of my attention, I give them maybe 60, and the other 40 goes to picking up what's in the living room. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm just tossing this out. Jesus said, go to your closet. Now, I drive to my closet. You guys know that. A lot of you know I drive to a cemetery every morning. I don't care if it's five degrees. It has been four. <laughs> and, you know, I don't care. I don't care. Stay in the car. Whatever. Find your closet. I'm telling you, and in these times, during mask extravaganzas, you've got to get close. You have got to adjust your schedule, okay, adjust your schedule around your time with the Father. Don't compromise. Oh, I hate that word. Christians, just, it's a disease with Christians. Stop compromising. Give God the priority God deserves in your life. And if you have to get up earlier, you get up earlier. Or if you have to stay up later, you stay up later. Who cares? This is an army. This is a war we are in. And that's just the life, that's, that's, that's the life I'm trying to lead. And I'm telling you, it just pays off. It pays off. It stuns me how God can readjust my schedule for the day on things I have absolutely no control over. None. And suddenly, oh, that person can't make a meeting. I'm like, yeah, he can't make a meeting. I'm pretty psyched. <laughs> or whatever the case may be. But make sure you keep God first. And just one more thing here. It's like, if I don't do it in the morning, if I don't seek God early, the odds of me seeking God with the same intensity decreases as the day goes on. That's me. It's the thing, like, I want to start my day with him because my day is going to be pretty screwed up, just like yours, screwed up. And if I don't, if I don't get my knees, then I don't get to the cemetery, and I don't dig in that book, <coughs> by 9 o'clock, the world's going crazy, Okay, by noon, it's just bye-bye. <laughs> and by the end of the day, it's like, oh, do I have to pray now? Yeah, I mean, it's good month. You know, just tossing this out there. I want to make sure, th this is a time for you to be engaged fully with God. Like I said, it's, and, and you know, whose choice this is? It is yours. Kind of talked about that a little bit last time. The choice is yours. Are you going to commit that time? Yes or no? Anyway, I want to toss it out there because for me, it has become a life and death issue. And I have been beaten up so many times in my life, I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm tired of being beaten up. Mm. All right, well, that was free. So you don't have to pay for that on the way out. Debbie, give me, the, uh, give me my uh, first slide there, please, then I'll take it from there. Thank you. Well, we're going to have a pop quiz. Now, you people were probably not expecting a pop quiz this morning because there are very few pop quizzes uh, that happen in church, which I think is a mistake. <laughs> but they're in the Bible. They're in, so Jesus asks Peter, who do you think I am? Pop quiz. You know? Who do they say I am? Pop quiz. So I figured, you know what? We're going to have a pop quiz. Now, let me just go to this. Here's the pop quiz. Poof. How come it's not doing its thing? Poof. Okay. It's not advancing, and our panel of experts are debating as to why it's not advancing. There's our pop quiz. What is that? Shout it out loud. <laughs> you guys are sharp. I, I've, I thought only people with gray hair would really know the answer to this particular question. Okay. That is, of course, 
the robot from Lost in Space. I used to watch Lost in Space as a kid along with Star Trek. It's kind of like, I'm still kind of in that zone, right? But you know, the robot, I don't know if the robot ever had a name. I don't think so. And what did the robot say a lot? Danger Will Robinson. And you know, I thought, well, we got to work the robot into this thing here this morning. And I think I'm going to call this sermon this morning Danger Will Robinson. You know, usually it's sort of about like some sort of faith thing. You scan sermon titles. So this one's going to say Danger Will Robinson. And why is it going to say Danger Will Robinson? Hold that question in your mind. Hold that question back. Because we're going to see the robot probably again. Just thinking out loud. Just thinking out loud. Now, every time I come up here, I, I like to build this scriptural foundation, okay, of, of where, I, where, where I really stand here. And the first one is, I, and I, I toss this one out all the time, Hosea 4, 6. This is my favorite verse. It might be in the whole book. I'm not sure, because that's like saying, what's your favorite song? It changes week after week. Yeah. But this one's like really high. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Ouch. Ouch. Well, whose responsibility is for that? It is mine. It is yours. And so I always like to figure out if something's going south in my life, maybe it's not more than maybe. It's like, where, the, where does the fault lie? The fault lie, lies with me. Knowledge of what would be the next logical question to ask. And I want to just toss this <clears throat> prayer out in First Ephesians. Paul has two prayers in Ephesians. The first and third chapters are just killer. Just killer prayers. Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, not stop thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I love that. I love that. I'm going to use my little red pointer here because I think it's cool. Okay. Okay. Give me spiritual wisdom... I'll go over here for insight. And insight. Spiritual wisdom and insight. And why? So I can grow in knowing God better. I look at it this way. I should know God better now than I did last year. Now, I know his thoughts are higher than my thoughts. His ways are higher than my ways. I got that. I don't need to be reminded. Okay? But you know what? I can know him better. I can know him better. One more thing I want to share real fast. You yeah, know, now you've heard this one before. Okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away, all things are new. Well, I am a new creature. Now what? You know, okay, I've given my life to Jesus. That happened eons ago in my life. Well, now what? When I gave my life to the Lord as a High school student, uh, it was our, uh, it went to a Methodist church, the Methodist Youth Fellowship, uh, the MYF we used to call it. Went to see this, um, this service at a local high school, the guy comes in and he's preaching to a bunch of high school kids there, and you know, if you want to receive Jesus, come on down, you ask him in your life, and I went down, and I was waiting for the national anthem and the you know, Star Spangled Banner, I was waiting for angels of glory, choirs and all that stuff, and goosebumps, and I was waiting for everything, nothing happened. Zip. Now, some people, when they give their life to the Lord, I mean, it's like they were hit by a bus. There was no bus in my conversion. <laughs> okay, it just didn't happen. And for several years, I kept asking Jesus in. Jesus, come on in, come on in, come on in. Come on. I want the goosebumps. <laughs> I never got goosebumps. Finally, it dawned on me. I think it's more of God just saying, Doug, wake up. I moved in when you asked me the first time. You don't need goosebumps. <laughs> you don't need to be hit by a bus. You don't be hit by a bus. And so, now what? Now, in Bible study a couple weeks ago, we bumped into a, a few places that actually said warnings. Hence the danger Will Robinson sort of thing. The Bible has interesting warnings. It's probably full of them. Don't do this, don't do that. I got that. Sounds like an old song. But I wanted to pick two. Two things that we all need to be aware of, okay? And the first one is laziness. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't talk about laziness, Doug. 
Talk about love. <laughs> you know, no. Laziness. We, we, uh, we're talking about this in Bible study. We're kind of going through some stuff in uh, Paul's letter to the Thessalonians. And he says, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Now, I'm not pointing fingers to anybody because we're all in this ride together. Encourage those who are timid, take care of those who are weak, and be patient with everyone. I'm working on that last sentence, okay? I'm working on that, especially bad drivers. It's kind of my fail where I fall, but I, I think it's fascinating. Warn those who are lazy. Other versions say idle. People, and, and you know, when I gave my life to Jesus all those years ago, I was a professional idle Christian. I was a professional lazy Christian. It was my job to warm the pew for an hour on Sunday morning. And then I could get back to my life the way it should be. I was lazy. I was idle. I didn't do much for anything for God, quite frankly, except show up because my parents, I, you know, I went with my parents, my folks, I grew up in this stuff. But God doesn't, he's not really into the lazy thing. Now, it's easy to be idle. It is e the easiest thing to do is nothing. And been there, done that. Okay, you know what the rewards are for laziness? There aren't any rewards. Nothing. And we're going to get to some interesting stuff about that. Let me zip through here. This one in Proverbs. A little extra sleep, a little more slumber, folding of the hands to rest, huh? Then poverty will bounce on you like a bandit. Scarcely will attack you like an armed robber. I mean, that's the advantages of being lazy. Right there. There's the advantages of being lazy. And I don't want that to happen. I don't want poverty to pounce on me. I don't want to be lazy in the kingdom of God. Bless you. <laughs> And like I said, I'm not pointing to people here. And there's always stuff to do in the kingdom. There is always stuff to do in the kingdom. And every once in a while, I need to stop and I need to analyze what am I doing in the king for the kingdom? What are you doing for the kingdom? Maybe it's stuff at your work or at home or stuff here in the church. You know, we're in the big, we're in the big changes here, folks. It is change city for this church. Maybe there's something that could be done. And I don't have a list. I don't, I'm not, you know, like I said, not throwing stones. But stuff always needs to be done. Don't be lazy with God. Don't be lazy with God. That's number one. That's our first danger, Will Robinson, right? Don't be lazy. You can catch yourself being lazy, too. And you'll know it. You'll know it. Number two, fear. These are just, you know, warning signs here. Let me take a, a quick drink here. I'm telling you, I've never seen the body of Christ so captured by fear as it is right now. And, you know, and I'm not throwing any stones again. I'm not throwing stones. I'm going to toss them in my direction as well. But it's, it's just, it stuns me, you know. I am not telling you how to live your life or what precautions to take. I would never, I would never do that. You know, I'm struggling with it too. Okay. But I hate fear with a passion. I can't stand it when fear rules my life. I can't stand it when fear influences. That's probably a better way to think about this. I can't stand it when fear influences my life. And, you know, it's not like it's a real blatant thing. Oh, Doug, don't step out in front of the bus. You know, it's not that. It's these little things that kind of creep in. You know, and I'm telling you, that's a danger Will Robinson moment. These little things that look so cautious and reasonable. You know, are they really cautious and reasonable? I don't know. I'm, I'm telling you again, folks, I'm with you. 
I am talking to myself. You just happen to be in a room where I'm talking to myself. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Fear. Fear opens the door to failure. I got that from my wife yesterday. She says, what are you going to talk about? And I said, this is not. She goes, oh. She goes, fear opens the door to failure. I'm there. I'm writing that one down. It just is true. I don't want to be a failure. No one in this room wants to fail your family, your friends, the church, the Lord. You know, we don't want to get down that road. But I'm telling you, danger Will Robinson. If you let fear in an inch, it will take a mile. The spirit of fear is not fair. The enemy does not play fair. Neither does God. And he gives you the name of Jesus, the name of his son, his, the blood. I mean, we could go on for that too. Everything you have overcomes that. All of it. The question is, are you going to put it into practice? Or are you just going to kind of be hesitant to do that? No, it says not to be ashamed. Don't be ashamed of this. It was, I was doing a job in, um, whoops, uh, um, Foxwoods in Connecticut. We were down there shooting some stuff. And we were done, and we were sitting in like this lobby with this, these big glass windows, and outside was this patio. And I'm sitting in there, we're waiting for everybody to wrap up and packing up equipment and stuff like this. I'm just kind of sitting there. And on the outside uh, was this guy doing these sorts of things. No, there's a name for that. I don't know what the name is. Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Done. Thank you. And I'm sitting there. This went on for 15 minutes. I'm sitting there inside going, that guy doesn't care what I think. That was like an epiphany to me. This guy out in the middle of Foxwoods. It's not just three people. It's 300 people walking by. And, and, and this guy's out there doing his thing. And I'm sitting there watching him going, holy cow, is that courageous? He's got enough guts. Because he's the only one doing this thing. You know, that, I sat there going, I really admire that, buddy. I didn't tell him that. But I'm sitting there going, I really admire the fact that you could care less what everybody else is thinking as they're going in and out of the patio, up and down the hall, looking out the window, you know, they're walking by. He, this guy doesn't give a hoot. I'm, not, I'm sitting there and I'm feeling like, I don't, I'm not a big fan of people seeing me with my arms raised. You know? I might look like a fool. And you know, and I haven't completely conquered this thing. It's a funny thing, because when I go to the cemetery in the morning, I like to start with my arms raised. It says, raise holy hands. But you know what? In the back of my mind, I'm looking around to see if, you know, is anybody else here? Yeah, it's sort of, sort of a deal. You know, it's not like I've conquered this. But, I'm, but then occasionally I'll go, heck with them. Everybody! <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Okay. But you know, don't be ashamed of God. And fear is, is just awful. Fear is just awful. Now, I want to go over a couple of things, a couple of areas of scripture that deal with my, our goal of laziness and fear, friends. So I am going to jump to this thing in Matthew. We hit this off in our Bible study two weeks ago. It was just so much fun. Again, Matthew 25, the kingdom of heaven can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip, called together his servants and trusted his mind to him while he was gone. He gave five bags of silver to one, two bags to another, one bag of silver uh, to the last, dividing it in proportion to their abilities. Key word there, abilities. They all had abilities. All of them had abilities. Abilities. Then the guy leaves on his trip. The servant who received the five bags of silver began to invest the money, earned five more. The servant with two bags also went to work, earned two more. But, and you all know the story, the servant who received one bag of silver dug a hole in the ground, okay, 
and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master returns from his trip, called him to give account of how they used the money. The servant who entrusted the five bags of silver came forward uh, with five more. He said, Master, you gave me five bags to invest. I have earned five more. The master was full of praise. Well done, my good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount, so now I'll give you many more responsibilities. Let's celebrate. Let's rock. The servant who had received two bags of silver came forward and said, Master, you gave me two bags to invest. I earned two more. The master is still psyched. Well done, good and faithful servant. You've been faithful in handling this small amount. Now I give you many more responsibilities. Let's rock. Let's have a party. And then comes our problem child. Okay. The servant with one bag of silver shows up. He says, Master, I know. You can just hear the violin playing in the background here. I know you're a harsh man. Investing crops where you didn't plant, gathered crops where you didn't cultivate. I was afraid. Bingo. Stop there. I was afraid. We'll come back in just a second. Uh, let me draw up to the I was afraid I'd lose your money, so I hid it in the earth. Look, here's your money back. Master replied, you wicked and lazy servant. Now, isn't that an interesting response? I didn't think he, I could see the lazy part, but God has tossed in the word wicked. If you knew that I harvested crops where I didn't plant and gathered crops that I didn't cultivate, why didn't you put it in the bank? At least I'd have gotten some interest on us. Then he ordered, take the money from the... Uh, bing, bing, let's go back. I skipped one here. Uh, let's go. Okay. Then take the money from that servant, give it to the one with the ten bags. So much for socialism in heaven, right? To those who use well... What they're given will be given even more. And they have an abundance. But for those who do nothing, laziness, fear, those who do nothing, even the stuff they had is going away. Then, it's, then it gets worse. Now, toss this guy in the darkness with his weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, I want to back up because it is vital to say, you know, look at that third line, that third line, I was afraid. Fear destroyed that man. He had an ability. He had the ability to take his bag and do something. Or else he wouldn't have got the bag in the first place. You and I have abilities that we can invest in and use in the kingdom of God. And you and I not using those abilities is heading south. You may not be heading south now, but south happens. It's you, every once in a while I need to take an inventory. It's like, okay, I want to make sure, well, I'll, just, I'll toss this out right now. I, I play the trumpet. Some of you know that, some of you don't. I have played it here maybe three times in the past 10 years. So it shows you how good I am at it. Okay. And you know, I used to be good when I was a kid because I played all the time and I was a, in high school and I didn't do it in, in college. But, and I feel bad about that. But you know what? I can, I can still play. It's a gift that I have been given. Now I can play the guitar too. You guys see that all the time. But it's like there's this other gift that right now is not being used. Now I really feel bad I'm sharing about this because now I feel guilt. Okay. <clears throat> but it's not being used. And it has eaten at me, quite frankly. I always tell kids who want to play music, music stuff like this, I say, you know, the world doesn't need another guitar player. They need another oboe player. All right? They need another you know, French horn player. They need another, you know, someone who plays the flute, the flautist. They, they need, you know, everything except bagpipes. I'm sorry. The world doesn't need bagpipes. Yeah, yeah. Personal opinion. Yeah, personal opinion. So you have to forgive me if you like bagpipes. But, you know, there are, I'm not doing anything with this. I have, and I know exactly where it is. I have it sitting out 
ready to go. I have a music stand with music on, scales to practice. It's been that way for three years. I'm just about ready to open that case up. And you know what? At, that's one of those things. I, I don't, I feel bad about it that I don't do that. Now, that's not going to keep me out of heaven. That's stupid thinking. But you know what? That's a talent that, you have, uh, uh, that I have been given that I am not using. This room is, is full of talent. Everyone had abilities. Those, those three guys, they all had abilities. This room is full of so much ability, it's scary. Now, you don't want to come to me and have me build your house. That would be a mistake. Okay. And, you know, but I can do stuff with the cameras that a lot of people can't do. We all have different abilities in this room, in the body of Christ. And I don't know what yours are. But maybe you should wake them up and, and use them for the kingdom. And this, this story with this guy here, I'm telling you, I don't think you're gonna, God's going to kick you out of heaven because you haven't, you know, done whatever you do. But there are benefits to cooperating with the program. I'm telling you right now. You plant seeds, things grow. Things grow. I love that story. And I had never really realized until we, we hit it in Bible study that he divvied this stuff up according to their ability. So that tells me that the guy who got screwed at the end had the ability to make another bag of silver. But he chose not to because he was afraid. Mm, I so hate fear. When you bump into fear, you need to hear you know, that robot yelling, Danger Will Robinson, in the back of your head. In the back of your head. Let me move on here. This is a good one. Job. Okay, we all know the story of Job. You know, has a lot, loses a lot, gets it all back at the end. That's the Reader's Digest version. <laughs> That's very much a Reader's Digest version. But he says this line at the end of chapter 3 that is fascinating. He goes, what I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come. What I have always feared I, I didn't know that was in there. Yeah, you just say, oh, yeah, Satan talks to God, Satan steals the stuff, and then, you know, we all know in the end of the book, he gets a lot of stuff back. But this, he says, what well, he has always, not just feared once or twice, he has let fear into his life. All right. Bad plan. Bad plan. Now, there's one more area of scripture here I want to go to. This is kind of long, but this is a great one. I love this one. Back to Moses leading the gang out of Egypt. Okay. A lot going on here. A lot going on here. So that's kind of where we are. And, of course, heck, we'll just kind of see what happens. So the Moses and Aaron, the whole community of Israel at Kadesh in the wilderness, they reported to the whole community these spies I have returned. Well, did I go too far? No, I didn't. Let's go back. One more. All right. These spies, so I'm just going to give you a little version here. They sent spies out into, the, into this new land, this, holy, this new, new place where they want, God wants them to move. Okay. They sent a bunch of spies out, so they're all kind of hanging tight. They're waiting for these guys to come back to Moses and Aaron, and, the whole, and everybody is waiting for them to hear what they say. So it says they reported to the whole community what they had seen, and showed them the fruit they had taken from the land. This was their report. All right. This is the report. Let's kind of look at this. We entered the land you sent us to explore. It's indeed bountiful uh, country, uh, country, a land flowing with milk and honey. Here's the kind of fruit it produces. But the people living there are powerful. The towns are large. Uh, let me see here. Towns are, okay, are large and fortified. We even saw giants there, the descendants of Anak, the Amalek, Amalek, those folks there, live in the Negev, and all these people live in the hill country. The Canaanites live along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, along the Jordan Valley, but Caleb, Caleb's sharp. He is one of two sharp people. Caleb tried to quiet the gang down as they stood before Moses, and this is what Caleb says. 
let's go at once to take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. Boy, you talk about guts. All right, considering they just saw a bunch of giants, none of those people are their friends. These people are problems. Like us, we have problems. Okay, but Caleb, you know, he's not looking at the waves. Remember the waves in Peter Sinkin sort of a deal, you know. These guys are looking at the waves. Caleb's got his eyes on Jesus, if you want to make that sort of comparison. Caleb tried to quiet the gang down. Let's go at once and take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. But, I love yes, but Christians. You know, I know a lot of yes, but Christians. You know, you can talk about your faith and talk about where you stand and what you're believing in, and their answer is yes, but. There's a lot of yes, but Christians floating around. And occasionally I find myself being one. Don't be a yes, but, yes, but Christian. Can't stand that. But the other, okay, we certainly can't get, But the other men who explored the land with them, they disagreed. You know, we can't go up against them. They're stronger than we are, you know. And they spread this bad report about the land among the Israelites. Now, God told them, hey, this, 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 this puppy is yours. They spread this bad report. We traveled through and explored, and we'll devour anyone. Who, yeah, the land we traveled through and explored will devour anyone who goes to live there. And all the people we saw were huge. We even saw giants. Now, there's a problem. The descendants of this Anak guy, next to them, we felt like grasshoppers. And that's what they thought, too. Okay, I got it. So it doesn't look good. Well, that's odd. A lot of things in my life, you know what? They don't look good. All right? I have some Amalekites and some Hittites in, these, in my life as well. And my, maybe our guy who the giant there, the Anak guy, I got a couple of them floating around in my life. All right? They felt like grasshoppers. That's what they looked like, too. Uh, so then the whole community began moaning and groaning and weeping aloud. They cried all night. Their voices rose in a great chorus of protest against Moses and Aaron. Oh, gosh, this is nuts. If only we had died in Egypt. Here we are in the wilderness. They complained. Gosh, you know, mm, we could spend some time on that. They complain. You know, it's interesting. What side of this are you on? Are you with Caleb and Joshua, or are you with the other guys? Toss that out. Well, uh, died in Egypt, or even in the wilderness, they complained. Why is the Lord taking us to this country only to have us die in battle? Our wives, our little ones will be carried off as plunder. Wouldn't, here's an idea. Wouldn't it be better for us to return to Egypt? Wow. There's bad thinking. There's bad thinking. Then they plotted amongst themselves, let's choose a new leader and go back to Egypt. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their face to the ground before the whole community of Israel. Two of the men who had explored the, the, two of the men who explored the land, Joshua, son of Nun, and Caleb, tore their clothing. They said to all the people, the land we traveled through and explored is a wonderful land. And if the Lord is pleased with us, he'll bring us safely into the land and give it to us. It's a rich land flowing with milk and honey. Do not rebel against the Lord. And don't be afraid of the people of the land. <clears throat> Look at this. Look, this next sentence is nuts. They are only helpless prey to us. Wow. I mean, according to the report from the other ten, <laughs> you know, I mean... Those ten saw things completely differently. Those ten were afraid. Those ten let fear rule the life. I love it. They're only helpless prey to us. They have no protection. The Lord's with us. Don't be afraid of them. Oh, holy cow. That is just like, that just says it all in my book. Don't be afraid of them. Fear sunk their ship. You know the story, okay? And, you know, 
Let me kind of zip through here. Let's go back. Ah! Oh. Fear sunk their ship. Fear sinks ships. Fear is the road to failure. Because of fear, they managed to spend 40 years meandering around the desert. I like what Joyce Meyer says, another trip around the mountain, you know? Another trip around the mountain. Fear will sink your ship. Fear and laziness are indeed Danger Will Robinson moments. We have got to be aware that, especially now, especially now with COVID-19, it's not just it's not just the COVID thing. You know, that list could go on and on. But I'm telling you, fear is not your friend. Laziness is not your friend. And my prayer for you guys here and whoever's listening at home is that you walk away from this in tune with these attacks, for lack of a better word. That's probably the best word to use. An, an attack of fear, an attack of laziness. And suddenly, and I think the Holy Spirit will just kind of say, you know what? You're, you're lazy here. There's stuff you can do. You have abilities that you have been given, and you're burying them in the ground because well, you're either lazy or you're fearful. And we can see the results of laziness and fearfulness in what we just went over. I don't want to, and I've been there. I've been there. Some of you might be there now. I mean, I always think of my guy, you know, doing this little doodad thing, right? He did that, and he could have cared less what I thought. I so admire that man. I never talked to him. I so admire him. You know, I need to walk in faith, not giving a hoot about what other people think. You know, especially, well, you know, <laughs> I, get a, I get flack from Christians. Tough. Tough. So, folks, that's my prayer for you. And I, my, my prayer is that, like, God just show you these attacks. And when you get these attacks, and, heck, I think it'd be cool if he, he, he always had the Danger Will Robinson going on in the back of your brain. I think that'd be a lot of fun, you know? Because it is a Danger Will Robinson moment. But once again... The choice is yours. I said this last month. I can't stand it when God puts me in a position where I have to choose. And he always does that. Am I going to choose to give in? Or am I going to choose to stand and fight? You know, Paul said, fight the good fight of faith. This is it, guys. I mean, this is a big fight here. I'm not fighting people. I'm fighting laziness. I'm fighting fear. Because if I give in to laziness and fear, the enemy has won in my life. And I'm tired of losing to laziness and fear. Now, I know this isn't a real cheery message. <laughs> you know, not a lot of jokes here this morning. You know, maybe we'll do jokes next time. But it's just a wake-up call. It is just a wake-up call. So if I see you guys, you know, like next week or the week after, I'm going to ask... You know, how's the lazy fear thing going? You know, and I expect some victory answers here. At least I expect you to be conscious of the fact you can say, no, I was afraid to do something. I was afraid to pray at this particular spot. I was afraid to worship at this particular place. I, whatever. But I did it anyway. God so honors you when you, you, when you just do it anyway. I just love that. Let's stand. <clears throat> so we're going to pray here for a second, and then if anyone needs any prayer, come on up front. We'll get the gang together. But, uh, so let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for waking us up. I thank you so much, Father, for showing us attacks of fear and laziness. Father, and I pray that you stir up your people I pray that you stir up everybody in this room and everybody who is listening at home to, to not bury those abilities, to use them no matter how weird or how, uh, I don't give a hoot, but to use those abilities that you have given us, Father, for your kingdom. 
We thank you, Father, in Jesus' most precious, precious name. And everybody said, amen. amen. Have a good week, guys. <laughs>